Okay, this sermon is entitled, Changed Lifers Are the Biggest Jokes on the Planet. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 138 reads, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answeredest me, and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. Now, when it comes to these stupid, unsaved, changed lifers, these people are laughing stocks. They're nothing but jokes. They're an embarrassment to the body of Christ even though I don't believe they're even saved at all. And the reason why this is, is because they don't have the goods to back up their stupid teaching. They claim that if you're truly saved, then you'll have a changed life. And they even attribute this change to God or the Holy Spirit, which doesn't make any sense at all, because in order for this change to take place, you'd have to do it yourself. So it's kind of ironic. They're telling you to repent of your sins. Then they're claiming it's God doing it through you which makes absolutely no sense at all. Now, when you examine these people, they are the biggest jokes on the planet. They might as well be wearing a kick-me sign with a dunce cap on their head and a booger hanging out of their nose while they incontinently drool and spit up rotten milk. Because I guess these people think that now that they've stopped smacking their lips and they've helped a cat out of a tree, that they're saved. It's a joke. It's foolishness. And it deserves nothing but maniacal laughter. <laughs> and the reason why this teaching is so perilous is because it basically tells so-called Christians that they don't need to read the Bible, they don't need to grow, it's just automatic. And this contradicts what the Bible says. Turn over to Galatians chapter number 5. Now the Apostle Paul encourages people to serve God. He doesn't state foolishly and absent-mindedly and stupidly that it's automatic, like these false prophet lordshippers are teaching. In Galatians chapter 5, it reads in verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why would he be telling people to walk in the Spirit if it's automatic? And the reason why he's telling people this is because he understands that no change necessarily will take place upon salvation. It's a personal choice. It's up to the believer to grow in grace. And... These fools out there, these unsaved devils, teaching this changed life, they're negating this exhortation. Now, I've noticed that these so-called changed lifers, they do exhibit fruit, but it's all bad fruit. It's all rotten fruit. Let me give you a list or tabulate some of the fruit of the changed lifers. Number one, they preach a false gospel, an accursed gospel. Number two, they mock faith and they call it easy believism. Number three, they self-righteously, sanctimoniously, pseudo-piously, and like a bunch of Pecksniffian Pharisees, judge other sinners condemnatorily. Number four, they trust in their self. Now, here's the conclusion of the matter. Here's the real reason why these people believe in this changed life theory. It's because they're not saved. They don't have a savior. They're not trusting in Christ, so they got to cling to something. They get their assurance from their so-called changed life, which means their assurance is not coming from Jesus Christ alone. And this is indicative that they're just not born again. And the reason why this teaching needs to be exposed is because it's a rejection of faith alone. A changed life does not come by faith alone. It's always some type of works or repent of your sins, this Roy's garbage, that allows people to feel like they've changed, or perhaps maybe in their own experience they have changed, but in God's eyes, it doesn't even matter. 
because it only takes one sin to be condemned outside of Christ. And even though these people might have changed, they're still sinners. So it doesn't even matter. So watch out for these frauds. The changed lifers out there, they're the biggest jokes alive. And the reason why I'm even preaching this is because none of them are really showing any change in the first place. Before these people supposedly got saved, and I don't believe they are, they were filthy, wicked, rotten, rude, crude jerks like Paul Washer. And they're still jerks. They're still losers. They're still false prophets. They're still teaching a false gospel. I don't see any change. Because this teaching is a joke, just like the proponents of it. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.